any confirmation on, on what, what to do there. So um, need, to, need to be aware of that. Okay. Arts Commission. Arts Commission. Um, I talked with the, the Chairman Brenda Dutton the other day, and she wanted me to let everyone know that um, the next meeting is uh, this Thursday at 5:30 at the uh, Arts Center. Um, and on April 25th, they are going to be having a uh, big fundraiser actually for the MAC. Um, it's going to be called Dancing with the Coffee County Stars, and they're going to have uh, different people from around Coffee County. Um, I guess kind of doing like Dancing with the Stars, the TV show. So um, she was wanting me to encourage everybody to get involved and help support that. Okay. Street. Uh, Water and sewer. Uh, we have a meeting Thursday. Recreation. We had a meeting Thursday at noon, and just in case everybody hadn't heard, American City Bank donated $10,000 to Park Partners. So that was huge. I think that's one to the soccer fields. Yes. And um, some act activities this month. There's a swim meet Saturday, and then on January the 31st, they are sponsoring the indoor soccer tournament. Historical zoning. <coughs> We've had no bunch of colleagues to vote on, so. We skipped the last couple of meetings. It's not been anything to do with it. Tourism. Uh, definitely. Before we end up for Planning Commission. Uh, planning Commission, the next meeting uh, normally would fall on, on Martin Luther King Day, but it's been moved to the 22nd at 5.30 during the boardroom. Uh, we're going to have to meet in Terry's office because we're having traffic. <coughs> while ago we did get one of the new lights on the square somebody hit one of them so we uh start right now but we're working on that and uh, we've already contacted that printer we got that under control okay we're getting the resolution in ordinance first thing i have is resolution supporting the city of manchester tennessee's application for a 2015 tennessee safe route to school grant second Okay, is there any discussion? Call the roll. Alderman French? Aye. Alderman Swan? Aye. Alderman Bryan? Aye. Alderman Kilgore? Aye. Alderman Sane? Aye. Alderman Foley? In your packet, the next thing is a third reading of ordinance authorizing the City of Manchester, Tennessee to enter into a contract with Brindley and Sons Construction Inc. in the amount of $229,966 for the Diabetes Grant Greenway Extension Project Phase 2. That's first reading December 2nd. Pass second reading December 16th is here for third reading. I'll make the motion. Second. Where the City of Manchester, Tennessee is listed bids for Phase 2 of the Extension Greenway Extension Diabetes Grant for Tennessee Department of Health and Contents Institute Support Group. Hearing by reference where the low bid was approximately about two hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred sixty-six dollars, which was made by Brilliant Sons Construction Inc. Where it's to find certain the city of Manchester, Tennessee, requires any obligation to see an income in excess of twenty-five thousand dollars to be approved. Orders where the city of Manchester, Tennessee, desires to accept the bid of Brilliant Sons Construction Inc. The amount of two hundred ninety-nine thousand. $229,966 is submitted, which is statute to exhibit A, exhibit to approve by the Tennessee Department of Health is conformed with the grant. Now, therefore, be ordered by the board matter on with the City of Manchester, Tennessee. The Department of State of Approval of the Tennessee Department of Health, the City of Manchester, the City of Manchester accepts a bit of brilliance on the construction ink in the map $229,966 for Greenway Extension Phase 2 pursuant to the Diabetes Grant for the Tennessee Department of Health. The scope of the project being is set forth in the request for bids incorporated hearing by reference. Be further enabled that the Mayor and Finance Director are authorized to execute the contract documents on behalf of the City of Manchester upon obtaining said approval. Be further enabled the Board of Mayor Honorable the City of Manchester, Tennessee's orders will take effect on an average publication and passage of the public for the City of Manchester, Tennessee Third reading. Okay, is there any discussion on it? Is there a timeline? Yeah, there's a Again, the, the yes, unit says about is. this is we only can spend so much money one fiscal year, so much money the next fiscal year. We have enough money in the next two years, we have two more years of this grant, to pay for this project. So it's within budget. So hopefully we'll be seeing construction start, I would say, middle March-ish. 
and get get done probably by maybe August. Yes, like the summer. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> and this is the one too that we may have enough funds left over to put some signage up, right? Yes. And that would say like you're at this point, and if you go to this point, it's this I actually months. got a donor who wants to start with the first sign awesome. at First National Bank in memory of her dad who used to walk the steps at the Greenway. And so we just discussed that, how we're going to try to start looking at what kind of signage we want along the Greenway and be able to have a memorial program or honor program where underneath the sign we could say this is in memory of or in honor of so-and-so. So that would help pay for the signs. So, I think we'll be good. Okay. Anymore? Cobra. Arm and French. Aye. Arm and Swan. Aye. Arm and Brian. Arm and Kilboy. Aye. Arm and Sane. Aye. Arm and Polly. Aye. And second reading of the ordinance authorizing the City of Manchester, Tennessee, to enter into a mutual aid agreement with the Secretary of the Air Force for Fire Protection and Hazardous Materials Instant Response. That's first read December 16th. Do you have a motion? Second. Second. Okay. Is there discussion on it? Call the roll. Arman French. Aye. Arman Swan. Aye. Arman Brown. Aye. Arman Kilgore. Aye. Arman Sane. Aye. Arman Polly. Aye. And second reading in order to enter into a lease agreement with all state capital for lease of certain recreation center equipment. That's first reading December 16. Second. Second. Is there discussion? Call the roll. Arvin French. Aye. Arvin Swan. Aye. Arvin Brown. Aye. Arvin Kilgore. Aye. Arvin Sane. Aye. Arvin Paul. Aye. Okay. Is there any old meetings? I, I, I just want to mention for anybody who wasn't at the work session, don't forget the, uh, the meeting that we're having with the uh, attorney in the, the county uh, of the school consolidation in February 12th at Westwood Junior Middle School. Okay. All right. Any new business? Any new business? I've got one thing. With the, I understand the ordinance that was passed uh, in regards to multiple freedom of information. I know. Is it new? It's just reaffirming a law, state law. The question is, we have employees that currently communicate through their personal cell phone with their supervisors about their employment. My understanding is that would make their phone open to the Freedom of Information Act. Now, we have a situation where the employee may not want to use their personal phone to communicate about the work business uh, so that their phone's not subject to the Freedom of Information Act. And we thought through the process of how it can go what are we going to do in that case? Are you talking about a, we have an people who do not have a city owned phone? Yeah. There's just several. Well, this, that policy only applies to city owned mobile phone use. But the Freedom of Information Act says if you use, if I use my personal phone for city business, that my personal phone is then subject to the Freedom of Information Act also. It's kind of Actually, Freedom of Information Act or Public Records Act talks about it being public, a public record. If it's your own private phone that you use, communicate. communicate. Okay. It's like if I call Mr. Carter on his city cell phone, mine is not, but Mr. Carter's is. It shows that that call was made. Now, I guess you could, if you used your personal phone to thwart the requirements to try to keep stuff private, Yes, and it would be subject to discovery in a civil case or something like that. The discovery rules and what it might be liable for then is different from whether it's a public record. And, you know, I'm not sure that every single call may on a private cell phone about city business, but if people regularly transact city business on that, it could be. But, but I, very definitely, if you call City Hall on your private cell phone, the city hall record of that and it, and it could very well convert that but generally it doesn't make it a public record you know if you make one call here or there it probably would but if you routinely did it in an effort to report it it could very well become a public record just because you can 
transacting city business on. I don't think an incidental call would. Now, if, if we got a lawsuit, yes, it would be discoverable, even though it's not under public records. But if, but if you call, say I call you, that that would be a public record <coughs> because you got it. No, not because I'm paying. But, but just the call itself. And right. 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 The, just the text is, itself, it was a text message. That would be, but of course, discovering the text was process as well. But right. Discovery in a civil case is different from whether it's a public record. If I send you a text on your city cell phone, that becomes, I think, a public record. If you check email on, on, on my private cell phone, I check public email, you know, I see the email account. Right, but it doesn't make the private calls you make on your, on your, on your private that. cell bill a public record. But yes, if you call in and check it and have some sent to Just that particular data. Right. That's well, it seems to me like there could be a memo all the city employees think this is potential. This could happen. Here's why. So, and then let them make the decision. It's explained in that law. It's just that was the purpose of the ordinance was to make everyone aware of yeah. the, the force of the ordinance of the law. Okay. That's about as clear as muddy water. I'm sorry. Oh, my example is my, my example is if I'm using my phone, my city phone, to contact my firefighters and tell them to come back to work. We've got a fire. You need to come to work. And I do this pretty frequently. And uh, so now, what is, is are their phones open to? Um, just that message. Just that message is what's just open. that message. And probably your phone is, but not their private number. Okay. The, the calls they make to other people or not, but the fact that they got a call from you, particularly if it's to come in about a fire, yes, I think that becomes a public record. Because okay. they're getting paid for it and it's it's their authority to come in. So yes it is. But, okay. but if they call the next call they make to order off Amazon or to call their girlfriend or their wife or one of each, then it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.